We see a very sad thing in this week's Parsha Vayera. A boy, Ishmael, is placed under a shrub, perhaps to die, because his mother and he have run out of water as they wander the desert. His mother, Hagar, cannot stand to see him suffer any longer. But then an amazing thing happens. An angel speaks out to her, says, Come, lift up the boy and hold him by the hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Sure enough, there was nothing to be afraid of. God opens her eyes and she sees a wellspring of water. Perhaps it had been there all along. What's interesting about this act of redemption is that the angel feels the need to ask the crying Hagar what's troubling her. If the angel had half a brain, he would have known she was afraid for Ishmael's life. Perhaps the angel is suggesting Hagar is overlooking something. For one, yes, there's that spring of water. But even if the spring hadn't been there all along, Hagar has something working for her. A promise. Last week in Lech Lecha, an angel, maybe the very same angel, promised Hagar that she would have children. Countless children. Clearly, then, this is not the end of Hagar's story, nor Ishmael's. It's the beginning of the story, of how he goes on to become the father of a great nation. Why did Hagar get such an excellent deal? Hagar had been running away from her mistress, Sarah. You know Sarah, the mother of all Israel. Apparently, Sarah, who hadn't yet had a child of her own, didn't like the fact that Hagar, her servant, was carrying her husband Abraham's baby, even though she'd suggested this arrangement in the first place. She made Hagar's life miserable. Finally, Hagar fled Sarah's harassment, and then this angel came along and said, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I am running away from my mistress Sarah. And the angel said to her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her harsh treatment. In doing so, Hagar experienced three things, more servitude, more affliction, and more strangerness. Hagar is a servant. She's afflicted by Sarah. And not only is she herself an Egyptian, a stranger in these parts, her name, Hagar, literally means in Hebrew, the stranger. What she didn't know is that these three things are ingredients in the Torah's recipe for nationhood. Earlier, God promised Abraham that he would have a child who would become a great nation. God brought Abraham into this trippy dream state and said, I know you're an old man and you have no children, but you will. That's the good news. The bad news is that these children will go on to experience exile, strangeness in a land not theirs. They'll be afflicted in slavery. And lo and behold, Abraham's children through Sarah become a great nation. So just as Israel went from becoming a family to becoming a great nation in Egyptian slavery, Hagar and her children are also bound for greatness. Under the blazing desert sun, Hagar is too panicky to see this. But we can. You want to do everything you can to protect your children from suffering, but this is in fact part of the growing up process, both for nations and for each of us. Could you have become the independent, compassionate, thoughtful person you are without the challenges you've weathered, without the journeys you've survived?